10 plays of Hakeem Adeniji, the left tackle, and Quinn Spain, the right tackle. A lot of plays to get through, so let's just go ahead and get started. We have a stunt coming from Bud Dupree and Cam Hayward against Adeniji and the left guard, Michael Jordan. But this play shows me that Adeniji is not just reacting to the stunt. He recognizes it immediately after one, two, two kick slides and just calmly passes Dupree off to Jordan and then receives Hayward, keeps his feet moving through the entire process. But this is reacting, but it's also showing clear awareness of what's happening and then having a plan to counter it, right? It's one thing to utilize this plus athleticism that Adeniji has to counter these stunts and loops, but it's another thing to show the awareness of it happening in real time and utilizing that athleticism to his advantage and not only neutralizing Dupree off of the snap, but then receiving Hayward, not allowing him to do anything. If only we kind of see the same process from Michael Jordan, who just kind of stops his feet entirely and allows Dupree to swim past him and get in Joe Burrow's face. But focusing on just Adeniji, a, a great rep that showcases great process and athleticism and great results as a result of it. Here we have a perfect 45 degree set from Akeem Adeniji. And it's important to note because against the Titans, he didn't really utilize a lot of vertical or 45 degree sets. It was a lot of jump sets, which is just getting your hands on the opposing rusher as soon as possible. It's a, it's a technique used a lot by guards and centers because they're just not in positions to play with a lot of space. But with tackles, it's really a method of just kind of hiding whatever flaws and technique that they have. So this rep from Adeniji is picture perfect and incredible to look at for a guy who's playing in just his second career game. You love how his feet, his hands, and his pads are all aligned and in sync in his set and his feet are moving while he's absorbing Dupree's power. Those low hands are driving up and into Dupree's chest. He's absorbing and neutralizing any force that Dupree is trying to bestow upon him. A picture-perfect pass set from Adeniji here. This is going to be another 45-degree set with Adeniji up against Dupree, but those, only this time. Dupree is going to try to convert speed to power with the bull rush a little bit quicker, about half a step quicker than the previous play. So Adeniji's process is going to be sped up, and this time Dupree is going to get inside hands against Adeniji. Still locks him down. Still keeps his feet moving while absorbing the power, and he's basing his anchor off of that drive step right here and redirecting him by opening up his hips, removing him from the passing lane entirely, right? Adeniji lost inside hands here, so he's got vice grips on Dupree's frame here on the outside of his shoulder pads. And he's still got great leverage, and he's in a position with his feet, with his pads, with his hips to redirect and control where Dupree is going to go next. A great job and a great adjustment on the fly here against a guy who can't convert speed to power with the best of them. Now let's check in on Quinn Spain at right tackle here. He's got a true one-on-one -on -one situation with TJ Watt. For most of the first quarter, he had Giovanni Bernard or Drew Sample helping him out here. Now he's just on an island with the best edge rusher in the NFL. A couple weeks back, we talked about with Bobby Hart. Hart's feet and his footwork were a lot better against the Browns. And it looked like he was just trimming the grass with his feet in his pass sets and his kick slides. Looks a lot like that, or did look a lot like that. You know, Spain is 330 pounds. He's playing a position that he hasn't played in like five years since his college days in West Virginia. That's the best way for him to cover the most ground against an edge rusher who can easily beat him to the edge. And Spain doesn't allow that to happen. In just three kick slides, he gets to the top of Watts' rush, the top of the arc, and just buries him. So great, effective pass set in this vertical set by Quinn Spain. Very balanced and very effective in covering a lot of ground and just through kick slides and then burying him to the ground. That's that's fun too. Here we got some love in the run game for Adeniji. He's going to go into the second level and take out the linebacker, Robert Spillane. I have no idea who that is. But the poor Steelers are playing just nobody's at linebacker aside from Vince Williams. But I like this play design in general from the Bengals. They're going to have a numbers advantage here with Drew Sample and Tyler Boyd taking out these edge, these edge players. And then you're going to have the initial action of the run kind of take the Steelers front towards the right. And then P. Ryan's going to kind of cut back or bend the play back into this gap. And it's important 
that Adeniji doesn't just go full tilt at the linebacker. He kind of waits for the play to, to develop so he can get Spillane towards the outside of his frame here and seal him out that way. So a good job of, of Adeniji keeping his body square to Spillane into the line of scrimmage and then making sure that he leverages him out of this gap so Pirine is untouched, accelerating into the second level for, I believe, a 12-yard gain. So great discipline and technique and good block by Adeniji. It took nearly two quarters, but the Steelers finally got a sack on Joe Burrow, and this is how it happened. You have Spain and Watt in a one-on-one situation here, and Watt is going to sell out all the way to try to beat Spain around the edge. Because eventually, I mean, Spain is just not a great athlete at the tackle position, and Watt is an insane athlete. So he goes full out and tries to get, chop that outside arm of, of Spain with a little chop from his right arm. And Spain does a good job of, of absorbing it, but eventually I mean, Watt is just going to get around the edge. It was a valiant effort from Spain, but he just doesn't have the athleticism to mirror him for the entire game. And, and eventually Watt sheds him, gets around the edge, and he's only getting the sack here because you have just a mass miscommunication on the left side of the line. Adeniji recognizes that there's a stun as soon as he sees Dupree kind of stop his rush and kind of loop back inside. And he's ready to take on Cam Hayward here, but Michael Jordan is just so sloppy and late to pass off Hayward and get himself set again to receive Dupree. He's turned completely around. Dupree has no one in his way except Trey Hopkins trying to do all he can to help out both of these guys. So just poor communication on both of these guys' parts, but at least you have identity here showing he at least knows what he's doing. And then Watt cleans up as he's able to get around the edge. So that sack ended that drive, but we have one more drive in the second quarter before halftime. We're going to see the same rep from TJ Watt. The difference here is that Spain locks him up and his footwork is much better. You're not, you're not seeing Spain cross his feet here in his pass set. I mean, it's the same point in time of contact. After his third kick slide, you have Watt chopping down Spain's outside arm with his right arm, but Spain is in a much better position to absorb that contact and absorb Watt altogether and keep him in front of him and mirror him around the edge. You don't have his left foot crossing his right foot. He's playing more balanced. And even though he gets to the same point, the same landmark in his vertical set at the same time because he's still a very limited athlete, he's able to lock him up and not allow him to shed around the edge. Now on this rep, we have Quinn Spain going up against the rookie Alex Highsmith. And Highsmith is a pretty decent athlete in his own right, but he's no TJ Watt, and this is a big difference why. That's like four or five steps from Highsmith to cover not that much ground. And then he leaves his feet, and as soon as Spain sees that, boom, stifled. Just launched his chest into Highsmith's chest and just set him back a little bit. Locked him up with some vice grips. Spain, very calm in his set. Nothing, nothing doing. On the other side, you have Adeniji with another potential stunt with Hayward and Dupree. And as soon as he knows that Dupree is not going to engage him, he's going to try to loop back around. He immediately goes to Hayward and helps out Jordan. And Jordan's kind of getting abused there with a little long arm from Hayward up into, into the chin of Jordan. But good processing and good awareness by Denigy to recognize what's going what's going on and utilize Natalesson to get over there. We're now in the fourth quarter, and it was around this time where you started to see Adenigy and Spain both getting beat around the edge more. And this was a pretty damning uh, rep in Adenigy's tape. And we talked about earlier, Adenigy did a great job of keeping his feet moving in his sets when he was engaged in absorbing power from Dupree. But this time takes like one kick slide and just stops his feet and he allows himself to get beat around the edge dupree established a very soft edge for him to just a little stab and swim to the outside and then flatten around the arc get a hit on joe burrow there after he threw after he threw the ball but then he's got to keep his feet moving there like one kick slide is not going to do it even when dupree is not at a, at a ridiculous angle off the edge here he's got to keep his feet moving in there because if you put it all on your hands there and you miss you're just not in position 
to keep him out there. So bad rep identity. But we're going to end the video on a high note because, God damn it, we need it. <laughs> Bengals ran this play a few times, and all of them with success. They're just going to have Adenogy fold over or behind left guard Michael Jordan here and pick up a linebacker in the second level and kind of be a lead blocker for Samaji P. Ryan. And a great job of turning uh, Spillane, the linebacker, who he meets again, turning him out of the gap and sealing him out. Like you can see right when he engages him initially, he's kind of pointed towards the safety and then he turns him all the way to this safety. And then Piran does a good job of bending the back, squeezing through the gap. You can kind of see, you know, why the Bengals coaching staff likes Piran so much. Because he does a good job of leveraging into this gap and kind of freezing this linebacker and then kicking it and bending it back here and giving himself more space there. But a great leap block and play call featuring a and utilizing that explosion and athleticism to get into the second level.